Okay guys, in this video, I'm gonna give you some hacks that will show you how to memorize anything you want. But before we learn how to memorize, in this video, I wanna do a little bit something different and I wanna show you why you're not remembering, why you're forgetting and use a, an analogy of a file cabinet as my example. So follow me, let's hit an Office Depot and we're going to use their file cabinets for this video, but I don't wanna buy them, but we're gonna use some file cabinets. Follow me in. So here's the deal. Your mind works like a set of file cabinets. Imagine this, you've got all these file cabinets in your office and every time you get a piece of information that you want to retrieve later, you open the file drawer and you put it in there. Makes sense. But what if you didn't do it that way? What if every time, instead of putting it in the file folder, you put it on the floor? And then you take the next one out and you put it on the floor put it on the floor. Every time you get a new piece of data, instead of putting it in the file cabinet, you throw it on the floor. And then in two, three years, you walk back in here to your office and somebody says, hey, I need the Jones file. I need the Anderson file. Normally, you just go in here and you open it up. Oh, so easy. Here's the Jones file. But what if you were throwing the files on the floor? What if you didn't put them in here you put them here. I tell you what would happen. You would walk in here and the files would be up to here. You'd have to get down your hands and knees and you'd have to sort through all the information. Two hours later, you would find what you were looking for. And this is exactly why your brain has trouble remembering. Let's head outside and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay guys, let's go back to that analogy that we had of the file cabinet. You get a new piece of information. You put it in your ear, it goes on the floor of your memory. You get a new password for your email address. It goes in your ear and on the floor of your memory. You read a new book on history. That history information goes in your ear. It goes on the floor of your memory. You meet somebody named Steve. That information goes in your ear and it goes on the floor of your memory. And let's just say every time you learn something new, instead of putting it in a file cabinet in your brain, like you would put a file cabinet in your office, you put it not in a file, but you're putting it on the floor of your memory. Every time you get it, meet a new name, Steve on the floor of your memory, Brian on the floor of your memory, Lisa on the floor of your memory, Karen on the floor of your memory, all these names are going on the floor of your memory. Then you read a new book and you got math formulas and history and business information all on the floor of your and memory. Boom. This is what your brain looks like. This is why you can't remember. Because then three weeks later, you're at the grocery store or Starbucks or the football game, and you see that person that you met, but you can't remember their name. Why can't you remember their name? Because this is why, this is why you can't remember the name. The data is on the floor of your memory. It's not in a file cabinet in your memory. If that name was in a file cabinet, you could retrieve it. How many of you students, you study for a test? Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, War of 1812, World War II, World War I, all the statistics. Then when you're taking the test, you get stressed out and you can't find the answer. You know the answer's in your brain, but where's the answer? It's in here, but you can't get the answer because this is what your memory looks like. Let's use one more example here of a desktop of a computer. Let's imagine, come over here. Let's imagine that your desktop looked like this. Then let's say you needed to find a picture or a file or a spreadsheet. It would be a mess. You'd never be able to find it. But let's imagine your desktop looked like this then you would be able to find what you need. Why? The difference is files. So here is the hack. Here's the thing. To remember anything, you need to unclutter your brain. Look at that mess over there. That's how your brain looks without files. That's how your brain looks without a memory system. So what you need to do is you need to organize this and build mental file cabinets in your brain. You would never clutter the desktop of your computer. You would never 
clutter stuff on the floor of your office with papers, you would always use files, whether it's a file cabinet or here. So let's use files in our brain. The next question is, is Ron, what is a file in a brain? A file is a place in a room that you have numbered. It's called the mind palace. I did a short video here describing what the mind palace is. Check it out. So what is a mind palace? Well, first of all, a few things. Number one, it's not just the work of fiction. It's an actual real thing and it was not invented by Sherlock Holmes. Number two, it actually dates back about 2,500 years to 477 BC. It was invented by a man named Simonides in Greece. A mind palace is essentially a room or a building that you have memorized and you use the locations in that room to store data. Let me give you an example. You go to your friend's house, you take off your jacket when you walk in the door, and then you set your jacket down in a chair. You go throughout the party, you spend time at your friend's house that day, and then three or four hours when it comes time to leave, you know exactly you need to go back to that chair to get your coat. Why? Because the chair held that coat in your brain. And that is exactly what a mind palace is. If your friend had two or three or four or five pieces of furniture, one you could put a hat in, one you could put your keys in, you could in theory go back to each one of those locations and pick up the items that you left. The mind palace works the same way. You memorize locations in a room and then you later go back to those locations to retrieve the data that you want to remember. The easiest way to build your very own mind palace is to stand in the doorway of every room of your house. Stand in the doorway, start at the left, go around the room clockwise and pick five pieces of furniture. Number them, one, two, three, four, five. Then go to the next room, stand in the doorway of that room and label them six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Go to the next room, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. In every single room in your house, pick five pieces of furniture and number them going around the room clockwise. A few rules of thumb here, pick big items, don't pick small items. And number two, spread them out around the room. Good items to pick will be things like desks or beds or TVs or refrigerators or stoves or microwaves or sinks or bookshelves or computers. Pick lots of different items, but if you use a chair in one room, don't use a chair in the next. These locations are going to be places where you're gonna mentally store data in your mind palace. Now, once you have these locations in your room numbered, then I want you to close your eyes and I want you to say, all your files, one all the way up to 20 or 30, however many you have, and then backwards, 30 to one. Say them forwards and backwards over and over again until you know them cold or until somebody could say what was number 10 and you could say what it was just like that. Next, a common objection to this is, is sometimes people will say, wow, Ron, this is too much work. Uh, you really want me to number all these pieces of furniture in my house and memorize all these pieces of furniture just to memorize a list of words or, or something else? It's not really true. You already have these locations memorized. I'm not asking you to memorize your house. You already have it memorized. I'm just asking you to number it. And once you have it numbered, it's gonna be a crazy cool skill that you're gonna be able to use to memorize anything you want. Now, let me give you an example of how you would use this to memorize something. Let's say that you wanted to memorize a list of words and on that list of words, number eight was a dog. Well, you've already determined what your eighth file is. Maybe it was your bed or your dresser or a desk or a computer. Let's say it was a computer. If number eight is your computer and I give you the word dog to memorize, you visualize a dog on your computer. The dog's biting the computer, the dog's barking at the computer, the dog's running around the computer. The more action emotion you see, the better. Then I say number nine is water, and let's say that your number nine piece of furniture is a chair. Well, you see that chair in your brain and you imagine water pouring out of the sky and the water goes all over that chair. Then later, when you want to recall the data, you go back around your mind palace and on the number eight spot, the computer, you see a dog, so you know the word was a dog. On the number nine spot, a chair, you see water, so you know that number nine was water. You always use every file in chronological order. And what I mean by that is this. If I say number eight is a dog and you think, oh, well, my number 13 piece of furniture is the mat 
where my dog sleeps. So I'm just going to imagine my dog there on number 13. You don't do that. You put the dog in the mind palace in the order that it falls. If it's the first word, you put it on the first piece of furniture. If it's the third word, you put it on the third piece of furniture. If it's the eighth word, you put it on the eighth piece of furniture. You put it in the order that it falls, not where it makes sense in your house. And that's an important tip for the mind palace. All right, guys, that is the Sherlock Holmes mind palace. And I have used it for over two decades to memorize all kinds of things list poems books and even set the record for the fastest to memorize a deck of cards in the United States so guys that's the difference the difference between why can't you remember anything you can't remember because your brain is cluttered it's like file cabinets is what you need if your brain is cluttered you won't be able to recall anything you need to unclutter it by building these files so the, this what, what I refer to as the mind palace if you want to take your brain the next to the next step, if you want to go to the next level, click the link down below. I have a free gift for you that will take your brain to the next level, help you declutter it. It is exactly what you need to memorize anything you want. If you liked this video, give me a thumbs up, like, 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 smash that subscribe button and leave a comment down below with what you thought. I will see you on the next video.